Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with trigonometric expressions. This is that type of problem that we haven't done for a while. I just wanted to revisit because these problems are fun. So we have tangent 17 degrees equals x and we're supposed to find or evaluate tangent 6 degrees in terms of x. Even though it's not explicitly stated, that's what the problem is asking for. Obviously, you can find a lot of ways to associate 17 and 6, and I'm only going to cover one of them. If you find another way to do it, you can also do so. So, what are we going to do for these kinds of problems? So, here's the thing. You're going to take 17 and then look at multiples of 17, like 2 times 17, 3 times 17, 4 times 17, 8 times 17, so on and so forth. And then try to relate that to 6. Make sense? For example, take 17. And forgive me, I'm not going to write the degree symbol for the rest of this video because I don't like rewriting it all the time. And I don't think it's necessary because it's understood. Right? All these angles are in degrees. Great. Now, take a look at 17. If you double it, you're going to get 34. Now, how could I relate this to 6 degrees? Do you think those are related? Well, related means there are some can be 90 or their difference can be 90 or 180 or 270 or something like that. So I'm going to use special angles to relate them. And I don't necessarily see a relation between 6 degrees and 34 degrees. So I'm going to double it one more time. That's going to give me 68. 68, let's go ahead and take a look at some associations. Like what is 90 minus 68? That is going to be a 22 degrees. And then if you do 68 minus 45, that's going to be 13 degrees. Hmm. Okay, I still need to get to 6. And I don't see a quick way to do it with uh, 4 times 17. But one of the things that we skipped here, remember I, st I told you, you could also multiply by 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. But we didn't multiply by 3. That's what we got to do. And you might be asking, why, where on earth uh, does that come from? Right? I know some people are going to question, how did you know to multiply by 3? Let me tell you. Because I made up this problem, so we can call it homemade. That's how I know the solution method. <laughs> okay, great. So I actually started with the solution to make up the problem. So I'm going to triple 41, I mean 17 to get 51, and then here's how I'm going to relate it to 6 degrees. Notice that 51 minus 6 is 45, right? So what I'm going to do next is go to 6 by subtracting this from 45. So I'm going to call that 45 minus, I don't want to use the variable x because we have it for something else. Let's call a for this. Make sense? And obviously, it's not 45 minus A. I should say 51 minus 45. Okay, this is probably a better way to write it. So get the idea. I triple and then subtract 45 from it. Why didn't I subtract it from 45? Because 51 is greater than 45. If 51 was less than 45, I would subtract it from 45. You get the idea? Okay, that's how I play with these numbers. So now here's what we have. I have tangent 17 is equal to x, so I need to triple it. In other words, if I have tangent x, or okay, I keep using x for the wrong reason. If I have tangent alpha, I do need tangent 3 alpha. So that's called the triple angle. How do you go to tangent 3 alpha from tangent alpha? I'm going to show you two methods. So those are going to be my two methods for solving this problem. First method, the usual method. If you memorized tangent 3 alpha, good for you. That's going to be the third method, which we're not going to talk about. But you can directly use it. But a lot of people don't memorize it. But tangent 2 alpha would be helpful. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. Start with tangent alpha and evaluate tangent 2 alpha. What is tangent 2 alpha? It is tangent alpha plus alpha, right? Hopefully you do know the formula for tangent alpha plus beta, which is tangent alpha 
plus tangent beta. In this case, beta is also alpha. So I'm going to replace it with alpha. Divided by 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. But that's going to be tangent alpha tangent alpha. Make sense? That's the double angle formula. You should memorize this, definitely. Don't try to come up with the formula every time. That's time consuming. 2 tangent alpha over 1 minus tangent squared alpha. That's our double angle formula. Great. Now. We're going to find the triple angle formula from here. How? Tangent 3 alpha can be written as tangent 2 alpha plus 1 alpha, right? And now we're going to use the sum formula, which is tangent 2 alpha plus tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent 2 alpha times tangent alpha. Okay? Sorry for the sloppy writing. And then I'm going to replace tangent 2 alpha with 2 tangent alpha, so on and so forth. But in this case, I think it'll be helpful if we set tangent alpha equal to t and tangent 3 alpha, just leave it like that. So it's going to be tangent 2 alpha. Tangent 2 alpha is 2t, or not 2t, right? 2, 2, tutor. Um, so we're going to replace tangent 2 alpha with 2t over 1 minus t squared. Tangent alpha with t, this with 1 minus 2t over 1 minus t squared times t. That's going to be your answer. Let's simplify it. It's going to give you 2t plus t minus t cubed. I'm just uh, making a common denominator. And forget about the denominators because they're going to cancel out. And we have 2t squared here. Let's put it there. And then we're going to have 1 minus t squared minus 2t squared. And then cancel out the denominators. Make sense? So that's tangent 3 alpha. If you simplify this, you're going to get the following. And obviously, there's a way to uh, make it better because if you negate the top and the bottom, it's going to look better. So tangent 3 alpha can be written as follows. Tangent cubed alpha minus 3 tangent alpha divided by 3 tangent squared alpha minus 1. All right? That's our triple angle formula. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to replace alpha with 17, and that's going to give us tangent 51. Tangent cubed alpha. Remember, tangent alpha or tangent 17 was x, so it's going to be x cubed minus 3x over 3x squared minus 1. Great. What am I going to do with this? I do need tangent 6. And tangent 6 is just, what? 51 minus 45, right? And then we're going to use the difference formula. What is it? Tangent 51 minus tangent 45 divided by 1 plus tangent 51 times tangent 45. Tangent 51 is this in terms of x. Yay. x cubed minus 3x over 3x squared minus 1. Minus 1 because tangent 45 is 1. Divided by 1 plus their product is just going to be the same thing because tangent 45 is equal to 1. And guess what? This is going to give us the answer once we simplify in terms of x. Let's simplify it. This is going to give us x cubed minus 3x minus 3x squared plus 1 divided by... If you put the 3x squared here, minus 1, plus x cubed, minus 3x. And obviously, you can kind of move these around a little bit. And that's going to give you x cubed, right, minus or plus 3x squared, minus 3x, minus 1. Now, take a look at the top and the bottom. Doesn't that kind of look like x minus 1 cubed What the with the signs messed up? Now, I told you that I was going to show you an alternative method, which is the second method. Let me quickly show you that. It's actually really cool. If you know that tangent alpha is equal to x, how do you find tangent 3 alpha? So here's the formula we're going to use. Actually, that's not going to be very practical, so I'm just going to quickly uh, run through this because uh, this would be more helpful for sine and cosine 3 alpha, but you can use them to find the answer. So here's how it goes. If you go ahead and take cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, which is a complex number, you can go ahead and cube it. And by the de, de Moivre's theorem, it's going to look like this. If you expand this, if you expand this, this is going to give you a really interesting expression like cosine cube alpha plus i sine alpha cubed plus 3 cosine alpha times i sine alpha multiply by cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And then you're going to set it equal to this. 
and the real and imaginary parts are going to make up this and that. And guess what? To find tangent 3 alpha, all you have to do is divide sine 3 alpha by cosine 3 alpha, and you'll get the answer. And guess what? It's going to give you the exact same thing. But this is the result. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.